I'm Kimberly Wallison for Insiders Health News. Today we take on the recent tragedy dubbed the Colorado Theater Massacre. A costumed gunman opens fire at a midnight premiere of the newest Batman movie, killing 12 and wounding 58. The youngest of the victims was just six years old. Events of this magnitude affect the nation as a whole, and our younger generation is no exception. As the event picks up more media attention, it may become difficult to shield your children from the harsh reality of such a senseless act of violence. So how do we explain it? Is ignorance bliss or are there lessons to be learned here? We talked to one medical expert to get her tips on how to talk through tragedy. To advise parents on how to address the subjects of tragedies such as the Colorado killing spree, we have on the phone Dr. Fran Walfish. Dr. Fran is a child and family psychotherapist and author of The Self-Aware Parent. Now, I'm really looking forward to your insight here, Dr. Fran, because after incidents like this, parents face such a conflict when it comes to how to explain it to their children. I mean, we can barely explain it to ourselves, but you do have tips on how to take on the issue. Absolutely, and thanks so much, Kim, for inviting me back on your show. First, you know, it's very, very important for parents to give children of all ages a perspective. Mm -hmm. Number one, if your kids have not heard about the tragic event, don't tell them, because what that can do is really stimulate fears and raise anxieties. And, and it is something for parents to consider. Do you even want to bring it up if, you're, if your child doesn't know? Now, my question here, going back to your original tip, is, is this really shielding them from reality that they should be aware of? The way to give perspective is to really in, inject a little bit of the reality, which is this is one singular, isolated, horrible mm -hmm. event. Ask your child, how many movie theaters are there in our neighborhood, in our city, in our state? How many times a day do they play a film? This has never happened before, and it is very scary. And this is a lesson that I think children learn even through movies, you know? You have the evil person, you have the, the hero, and where it's so easy to differentiate between them in movies, in real life, not so easy, as you pointed out. Um, now, going on to your next tip, I know that this is a very emotional issue for, for many, and I think it brings up a lot of the same emotions uh, as the school shootings did, even 9-11 to some extent. So when a parent is discussing this with their child, should emotion play a part in the conversation? Parents need to be calm and very clear-headed when they sit down for a, a dialogue with their child. Kids read your emotional state with laser-sharp radar. So if you're anxious, it's going to raise your child's anxiety. They're looking for your affect, body language, tone of voice, and facial cues to read should they be more frightened or less frightened. Are you cueing them there's danger lurking or overall we're okay? And hopefully you're a source of calm reassurance even in the face of having to talk about the what if. Right, because we can't underestimate that these kids are like a sponge, you know, they hear everything and I think it's, you know, whether that's on the news or, or on the newspaper, you know, they hear things, they see things and I think it's difficult for a parent to know what the child knows, what they understand, what they don't. So what is the best way to gauge this in your own child? You know, every personality is different, adults and children. Some kids are closer to the best, more shy and introverted, and they don't want to talk about it. For those kids especially, but for all kids, it helps to have markers, crayons, paper. Give your child a chance to draw. First, just free associative drawing, meaning you don't have to direct what the content is on the paper. Yeah. But then you can say, draw a picture for me of what you think happened. See what your child puts out on paper. And then you can clarify and talk about the images. For other kids, it's really helpful to have a gross motor expulsion 
that means some physical outlet. So running, playing a game of chase or hard handball. Ooh, if this was the bad guy, I'd punch him in the head. Bam! Mm -hmm. Boom! And for the child to be able to run and physically put that aggression, I'll call it healthy aggression, Mm -hmm. out Mm -hmm. and get it out of their body is extremely therapeutic. Right, because it's not promoting violence so much as it's just promoting a healthy way to express yourself. We all feel anger, we all feel aggression, and we do need an outlet for it. It's so critical that parents do not begin this conversation by shoving too much information Mm -hmm. into their child. It's much better to begin by asking, what have you heard and read or seen on TV? And then let your child tell you, and you can adjust the information to tweak it rather than shove it in. Mm -hmm. It's also really important for parents to observe if there are any changes in your kids' sleeping or eating patterns, these can be signs of depression. And depression is certainly one way that some children and some adults deal with very upsetting information. It's usually by holding in terribly sad information and angry reactions and those people need treatment Mm -hmm. so it's helpful to consult a doctor. Mm -hmm. So open communication between parent and child and I think that's applicable to any situation but particularly to these instances of tragedy. Uh, I think those are wonderful tips. Uh, I do want to ask while I have you on the phone as a psychotherapist you might have some medical insight on this. Can we expect an insanity plea out of this case? I I think you you can, but the tricky part here is he this guy really premeditated this event. He he categorically and methodically slowly ordered Mm -hmm. the weapons, the the materials that he used to put this together. I think they'll probably try for an insanity plea and to look at him in court today with that orange-red hair and his eyes rolling in circles, he does look crazy, Mm -hmm. but I believe with premeditation they will not succeed. You know, we we can't know yet. We will certainly follow this case and, and our hearts are definitely with the families that were a part of this tragedy. But we thank you again so much for your time and insight, Dr. Fran. We always love having you on the show. You can find more on drfranwalfish.com and you can continue to check insidershealth.com for updates. Until next time, stay well and stay safe.